Hi there, welcome. My name is Jason and today I'm here to introduce one of my favorite plants to you. This plant is known as the flowering maple. Uh, this plant is called a butylon hybridum and it's a hybrid actually um, of some uh, it's in a butylon hybrid. One thing that's really awesome about butylons is that they're in the mallow family. And so this is a family of plants that generally has a like, I would say like low to no toxicity. This flower actually is edible. And anywhere that I am, I always have this plant. Uh, this right here is the uh, Blush of Dawn variety of a butylon. And the flowers are edible. They are so awesome for garnishing, um, you know, your food, um, beverages, like desserts, and it's just so beautiful. And there's a hummingbird. This uh, plant is loved by hummingbirds. I usually place a feeder um, nearby, so it's like a hummingbird sanctuary plant. Um, I'll have like cucaras on the, you know, which is like a lower flowering plant, um, and then the abutilons, like they go up, and then you know, the hummingbird feeders, like above that. And I like to place them near windows. As you can see, there's a big giant floor to ceiling window behind me. And a uh, super great plant for attracting like butterflies and bees and hummingbirds to your windows. Um, if you have pets, like if you have cats or dogs, sometimes they just love to like watch the wildlife through the window. Um, and this plant is definitely one that will do that for you. Uh, this plant is great for um, sun to part shade to light shade. Uh, so it's a great plant for that spot of the garden that you just, you know, the shade can be difficult because there's so many plants, especially flowering plants, that want a lot of sunlight. So um, this is a rock star. They call it the, the flowering maple also because, um, as you can see, the leaves are very like maple-like leaves. So um, it's just, yeah, pretty awesome plant. This plant comes in like so many different colors. They're just hybrid after hybrid of this plant and um, the colors like you know you have like red varieties orange varieties um, I've seen uh, purple um, pink uh, bicolored there's um, a butylon megapotanicum hybrids with more pronounced caps on top of them um, where they look like little fairy hats um, but yeah this is this blush of dawn one's so awesome you can float these in water and like if you have like a little uh, bowl of water you can float them in it and they're just really pretty like that uh, this plant originates from um, a number of different parts of the world, and this is actually a hybrid. So I can't say that this particular butylon comes from one place, probably. Um, its origins uh, do find themselves in South America. Um, even Australia has a butylon. Um, it's a very large genus with very many different varieties of the species. Um, and there are a lot of hybrids. Blush of Dawn is pretty awesome because it just bloom, bloom, blooms. I never see it going to seed. Um, this variety was selected because of its bloom factor. Um, all abutilons have huge bloom factor. Uh, but this one doesn't complete the cycle by going to seed. Um, instead, it just keeps making blooms and they fall off. And so you do want to be um, aware of what you plant beneath the plant because it will drop a lot of flowers because it makes so many flowers. So if you look beneath it, um, it's a little bit of a mess. But um, there's some heucheras, that's these plants, and uh, there's some balmia. Um, it's a great companion plant to Daphne also. Daphne is a winter flowering plant that does well in dappled shade. Um, so an awesome plant just all around, uh, attracting wildlife, giving you all these blooms, um, all of these blooms that you can incorporate into cuisine. Um, the flavor, not much of a flavor, um, not much of a fragrance either. Um, I usually use the lettuce reference when I'm serving it, uh, just because it's kind of a blank flavor. But um, it definitely adds beauty and flair and pizzazz to wherever you put it. It's, it's just so pretty. It's like um, putting hibiscus flower on your plate. Um, but, you know, and actually that is a relative of this plant because they're both in the mallow family. Um, I ha uh, Gophers do like a lot of different plants that are in the mallow family. So um, if you do have gophers in your garden, I recommend putting a wire net around the root ball upon planting to discourage them from, you know, coming to this plant. Um, but uh, it's just all around awesome. As far as fragrance, not much of a fragrance, uh, just beautiful. Um, what else do I have to tell you about this plant? Um, oh yeah, remember the, the windows, the floor to ceiling window. I'll show you the effect that you get when you plant this near a window. So we're just gonna go inside. And, and as you can see, you know, if you're like over here, like sitting on the couch, 
you can just glance over while you're hanging out and there's the feeder where that attracts hummingbirds and then you have like you're just all these flowers they're so cool to just like have this like right outside your window uh so very awesome feature for this plant um as far as the soil, it wants a well-draining soil. So if you have um, clay soil, just amend it with some garden soil. It's a more adaptable type of plant where, um, you know, it doesn't, uh, it wants the well-draining soil. So it's, it's the best idea to give it that. But it is a tough plant. Uh, and it's, uh, it can, you can plant it in neutral to alkaline to um, slightly acidic to acidic like soil. Um, I would kind of steer towards like neutral. Um, look, there's our hummingbird where it go. I heard it. Anyways, um, you know, to neutral, um, a neutral soil is a nice soil for this plant. Um, you could go slightly acidic. That's nice too. But, you know, just amend your um, garden soil with, um, or amend your soil in your yard with garden soil, and that's good for this plant. Um, as far as watering, it, this plant requires medium water needs. Uh, it does establish itself, so the longer you've had it in the ground, the more, um, the, you know, the more tough it is on its own. Uh, you'll notice though, if you're not watering this plant enough, you'll see the leaves kind of droop and, um, you know, just water it. They'll perk right back up. So long as you haven't let it dry out for too long. Um, but you know, a couple times a week, um, is a good watering schedule for this, but it really does depend on where you live. Um, as far as the, um, cold tolerance of this plant, uh, this plant's cold tolerance is it, it can survive up to like 20 to 25 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty cold. So um, always just be careful on, you know, when a freeze comes, you know, um, if you live in a really, really cold area. But this plant does have some cold tolerance. Uh, and yeah, uh, it's just an all around awesome plant. You can propagate it. Um, as far as propagation, it propagates easily. Uh, you can root this in water um, if you want to um, be, you know, have a greater success rate. Um, you can also root this in perlite with rooting hormone. Uh, that is really great too. As far as fertilization, I would, I would use a, a blooming fertilizer for outdoor plants um, because it just puts on so many flowers. I feel like um, you want to support it nutritionally with a fertilizer that supports all of these flowers that it continues to make. And uh, yeah, you will not be disappointed in this plant. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, just, you know, go to your local nursery, check out what they have. This plant's usually found in the shade area. And, um, and yeah, multiple colors to choose from. Uh, this plant is known as a hybrid. It's a butylon hybridum. And, uh, yeah, my name's Jason. If you like this video, please click that like button. Any questions about this plant, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. And once again, thanks so much for hanging out with me. My name's Jason. Thanks again.